All right, in today's video, I'm gonna go through how to remove brass through holes on your Boston Whaler or any other fiberglass boat and how to, uh, how to replace them properly. Now, you're gonna need some tools to do this. Uh, one of them that you're gonna need is gonna be a flaring tool. You can get these and I'll put links to a lot of this stuff. Um, you're gonna need something to remove the old flaring tool. I use a one inch dowel that I have cut to size uh, which really comes in handy and I'll explain and show you why in a few minutes. The uh, other key things that you need is various hammers, various wrenches of different sizes to drive the tool. And we're also going to use a hitch ball and you'll see how we're going to use that later in the video. So before we get started, one of the things that we got to do is remove the through hole. But before we do that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button and you'll get notifications of when I put videos up in the future. Um, if you look down here, this is the long one that goes into the uh, sump area and um it's about a foot long but i've already got that one out i did use the dowel which uh came in quite handy to push that push it all the way out now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how i remove these and basically it entails collapsing you can see this still has the old o-ring but it entails collapsing the uh the brass bend it in A pair of pliers might come in handy too to squish this. That, that one actually broke. That's not a big deal. This is where the one inch dowel comes in handy because you can pretty much grab the whole thing. If you don't have a one inch dowel, the other thing I have is a large bolt and you can grab the edge of it and start pushing it through that way but I really like the dowel so let me go ahead and go to that and here it is all the various pieces that came out of the uh, that old uh, that old through hole. Now in order to prep this, the next thing I like to do is sand that area down. I've got some 600 grit here I had in my pocket. Just clean it. Actually, I want to get rid of some of that paint. So, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the Sadie grit. I don't want to take too much off, but I do want to clear the area around it off. And I also happen to have some acetone. Now I'll explain why we're doing that shortly. For right now, I'm just using it to clean some of that stuff off. All right, so we've got this long brass rod, and what we need to do is measure it to the right length and cut it. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now to start, I'm going to put two O-rings on it. And you're probably wondering why, but I'll give you a close-up here in a minute, and you'll see exactly what I'm doing. Um, one of the reasons to do this is that when you cut, you want to cut to the thickness of two O-rings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in here. And then I'm going to put two O-rings on the outside, or excuse me, on the inside. I need you to push it in a little more. Right. 
make this flush so what we've got is a thickness of two o-rings on the inside two o-rings on the outside I'm going to carefully mark that and that's going to be where we're going to cut Now, I'm going to do the same thing for this bottom one. I'm just going to use the other side. And um, the reason I'm doing this is we're going to do something special with this other one to try to match the angle of the hole. But let me get it started here. This one's really long too, by the way. Push it, push it towards me. Alright. Okay. Make it flush. Now we're actually going to have a pretty severe angle on this one. I'm going to handle this one a little bit different. And you'll see how, when I, uh, well, look how long this is. Can you pull the overings off? I got it. Okay. All right, so these are marked. And we're going to go to the shop to cut them. And I'll explain why in a minute. A um, couple of ways of cutting this. What you'll see in a lot of videos is people use a uh, tube cutter. And that works. However, it leaves a crimp in here, which is pain in the butt to work around um, the other method is using a hacksaw and uh, I'm going to show you both methods and what they end up doing all right so we're in the shop we got the brass tube let me give you a close-up of that uh that one that we cut with one of these cutters a brand new one with a sharp blade and what you'll see is that it's got a crimp so if you look at the flaring tube it's not going to fit. Now it looks like it'll fit because I've actually filed off or ground off a little bit of a bevel on there so I could help straighten these out and I might do it some more. So we'll have to straighten that out before we do anything with it. But for now, what I'm going to do is cut. Now the short piece does not have much of an angle on it. So we're going to start with that. And what I have found, we're going to get close, is that these have Pretty good gripping power. Now I went ahead and I bought some blades, 32 teeth per inch. It's a really fine blade and actually takes quite a while, bit of time to cut through it. Make sure it's nice and tight. And uh, Take some nice slow strokes with this. That's going to leave me a nice flat edge. It's a little ragged, but what I'll do is I'll use a sander to um, smooth it out once we get through with the cuts. get rid of the rough edges on it and after this one um, what we've got here I don't want to crush this this is what we've got here this is the side that we're going to use and there is a severe angle on here which 
is the back of the transom. I'm going to use a uh, cutoff wheel to get that one. I lied, there's three ways to do it. I'm going to use a cutoff wheel to get this one because it's a severe angle. like this method a lot better uh, it's not smooth but I got that the angle is perfect that's exactly what we need for that let me clean it up all right this one's good to go other than uh, we need to expand this all right so I've got all the pieces I need cut out and before I do any uh, flaring, what we got to do is anneal the brass. And I'll do that with a torch. And I've got a bucket of cold water. And the reason we're doing this is to keep the uh, brass from cracking. And so it'll bend easier, basically. <laughs> Alright, next step is going to be flaring these out. So I've got the flare tool, and the way the flare tool works is it's got two washers. Um, one looks like it's a copper washer. The uh, flare end goes inside there. Although, what we're going to do in this case, I'm going to go to close up here. We're going to put the flat end facing the piece we're flaring because we don't want that piece or that side to flare. We want the other side to flare. So we'll get this in here and then washer washer and that and if we're lucky we'll get that started and i'm going to compress this down until this side flares out and it's flush with the uh, flaring tool so we can get this started let's see now you can oil this. The only thing I would caution that is you do oil it, degrease it thoroughly before you uh, put it on the boat because we're going to use Alright, I think we're there. This is what we got. It's flush. It should be pretty close to being flush. All right, so we've reached that point where we're going to start putting these in. I've got some sealant. Um, a lot of folks use the uh, 3M4200. I couldn't get that in a local store, but they had this PL Marine Fast Cure by Loctite, which is pretty close to the 4200. At least I hope it is. I hope it's not close to the 5200, or we'll never get this stuff out of here. But anyway, this is what we're going to use. And I'll show you exactly what we're going to do here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a layer of sealant behind the uh, flare and it's okay to have extra because the excess is going to be wiped off with acetone then we're going to move this up uh, get it all over our fingers and we're going to put a layer behind it Yeah, gloves would be a good idea at this point, but I want to get this done. All right, so we got a layer on both. Doing this one a little bit different. 
going to uh, put a layer around the entrance. I don't see the point of putting some outside the O-ring. To be honest, it just makes a huge mess. It makes it hard to see where your flare is at. Now, honestly, the uh, original factory ones did not have sealant, that, at least that I can tell. Now I can see what's going on with the flare. It's going to need some more compression. to spin a little bit which way like uh to, for you it would be right. clock, clockwise yeah a little more right right there yeah pushing as far as it'll go should i start over no that's good because just make just give it a tap it in a little more what we're doing is we're wedging up that brass gonna hold it because I'm gonna beat it on this side with a ball hitch. Um, see if I can find it. Alright, so this is where it gets a little interesting. I've never done this before, but I wanted to try this and what I'm gonna try to do. This won't work because it's at an angle. This is cut at an angle. I mean it might work but it's not likely uh, to work very well. So cut it Use a ball hitch. To expand it. And it's opening up. And I almost forgot something very important. I'm going to come from this side, so you're not going to see it, because I see that it's expanding a little unevenly. And you can angle this to make sure that it's expanding evenly. Now for the piece de resistance. That actually looks pretty good, and that was with the uh, with the ball hitch, two inch ball hitch. Probably a smaller ball hitch would have worked better, but that's all I could. Uh, that's all I had laying around. Let's see how this side came out. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, hit share and like. 
and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.